So I have in my hands a Russian-made um, Su-27 aircraft. You can see this model that someone actually made me, a friend of mine uh, made me. In a moment, I'm going to be telling you about a dogfight I had with a Russian airplane. But before I do that, let me just ask you this question. What would it be like to be able to perform at your peak? I'm talking about like get up every single morning and get more done in the first three hours of your day that you used to get done in an entire week. I will tell you that as an entrepreneur, I've learned how to take the strategies out of the cockpit and bring them into my day in terms of elite performance. And today on Ed Talks Live, we're gonna be talking about how you can roll up your sleeve and flat out get it done every single day so that you can take more time off, you can build your business around your life, not the other way around. You can get more done, you can make more money, and you can have a bigger impact on the world. This is Ed Talks Live. Hey there, welcome to the show. My name is Ed Rush, former F-18 fighter pilot and five-time number one best-selling author, your host for the most positive place on the planet with insanely implementable ideas. This is Ed Talks Live. Now, in the introduction, I shared uh, this model was an F Su-27. This is truly one of the one of the baddest airplanes on the block. This is a Russian-made airplane, highly maneuverable, great uh, forward quarter and side shooting uh, weapons systems. But much like every enemy aircraft, we here in the United States train for years to be able to fly against them and win. And I found myself one day flying against a Russian-made MiG-29. Now, a little bit of the backstory. This wasn't some undisclosed war over some border that nobody ever talked about. This was actually a training flight. You see, most of the squadrons in the world that fly MiG-29s, Russian-made MiG-29s, are our enemies. For example, North Korea has some of those airplanes. China has some Russian-made airplanes. There, uh, certainly Russia has the, uh, those airplanes. And most of the air forces in the world that fly Russian airplanes, let's just say they're not our friends. But there is one squadron in the world that flies MiG-29s that happen to be our allies. You see, there used to be two countries uh, called East Germany and West Germany. But, you know, back in the 80s, those two countries came together into Germany. And when that happened, there was a squadron of MiG-29s in Germany that became part of the German Air Force. The German Air Force pilots flew to Las Vegas to do some training uh, one year, and we flew to Las Vegas to meet them. And for a week, uh, probably one of the most enjoyable weeks of my life, <laughs> I was in Las Vegas flying with and against MiG-29s. And I got my chance right at the end of that little deployment. Uh, my commanding officer uh, pulled me aside and said, hey, you're going to go out and do a dogfight against a MiG-29 today. And I went out and flew against the senior pilot, the commanding officer of the MiG-29 squadron. I was a brand new pilot. And I had never flown against a Russian airplane before. You know, we had trained for years to be able to recognize the signs on a MiG-29 and the, 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 uh, the, the telltale indicators on top of that airplane. But you know, there's one thing between intelligence and application. And I'll tell you, even though this is an Su-27, on the top of the MiG-29, uh, there's these, there are these louvers. There's air intake ducts that sit right up here on top of the wings. And when the airplane has slowed down considerably below its ideal maneuvering airspeed, these louvers begin to open and close. You can actually see them opening and closing on the top of the airplane like, uh, like someone's eyeballs opening and closing. And my instructors told me, you know, when you see those louvers opening and closing, it means the MiG-29 is beginning to get out of speed. I'll tell you, that was pretty good information. That was pretty good intelligence. But I'll tell you, there was another piece of intelligence that was even better. And so I'll tell you about this dogfight. Two airplanes, we started at about three miles apart. We separated and turned uh, and went out to about five miles where we turned back in towards each other. I'm using my hands as airplanes this morning. Uh, we turned back into each other and passed. This is typically in a dogfight where we start the actual fighting. This is all set up and maneuvering. This is where we, the actual fight actually starts when two airplanes pass each other. And typically, just as we pass, both, both pilots over the radio say, fight's on, that means we're on. At this point, we pass each other. The MiG-29 is going about 500 miles an hour. I'm going about 500 miles an hour. That's one 
thousand miles an hour worth of closure and immediately both airplanes we pulled directly into the vertical. The MiG-29 can do about eight to nine Gs. My F-18 can do about seven and a half to eight Gs. That's pretty comparable, but both airplanes are pulling now maximum G forces into the vertical, pull, pull, pull. Your face is actually pulling off of the skin of your face. If you look at this uh, helmet that I have behind me, the oxygen mask, when you pull that many Gs, starts pulling off of your face. And I'm pulling, 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 looking over my shoulder. Both airplanes now turn towards each other and we pass each other again at about 500 miles an hour worth of closure. Each airplane about 250 knots worth of airspeed. Now, in this exact moment, the MiG-29 makes a mistake. And I can't go into the dogfighting details as to why this was a mistake, not for secret reasons, just for time reasons. Uh, the MiG-29 now immediately goes nose low. Now, I had been told by my instructor, if you see a MiG-29 go nose low at a slow speed merge, which is exactly what that was, slow speed merge, nose low. If you see a MiG-29 go nose low at a slow speed merge, here's what you do. You pull your aircraft up, pirouette, and take an AIM-9 shot, okay? So a pirouette in an F-18, highly maneuverable airplane, the F-18, uh, a pirouette is, an, is a maneuver that it, only an F-18 does really, really well. And a pirouette is a slow speed maneuver where you pull your nose up and you actually turn full rudder and full aileron, which is the wing um, uh, maneuverability, uh, to the left. And what happens is the airplane literally slices completely down. It makes a full 180 degree turn in the air. Well, in my F-18, if I was able to do that, like my instructor told me, pull your nose up, full pirouette, aim nine shot, I would have won the dogfight that day. So, what did I do? Well, the question is, what would anyone do? You see, there's four types of people in the world today. I mean, if you looked at it in a category box of information across the top and implementation across the bottom, there are people who don't have information and there are people who do have information. There's people who don't implement and there's people who do implement. So for example, the type one of people are the people who have no information, nor do they care to implement that at all. And if you're watching this video or this live broadcast today, that's not you. The second group of people are the people who have all of the information, but they don't implement. You ever met someone like this? These are typically very critical people, people who are always telling you what to do, but they never do anything themselves. And finally, you wanna look at folks like this and go, why don't you just go implement some of this stuff? What are you talking to me about? You, you go do it, right? These are typically very critical people who know everything, they just don't do anything. The third category of person, you have to feel bad for actually. I mean, they have no information, they just have full up implementation. These are the proverbial chickens with their head cut off. These are the people who are running around frenetically with no idea what to do. They just continue to implement and continue to implement. Stage four or type four kind of people are the kind of person you wanna be. That's the person who knows what to do and then does it. It's fundamentally what an entrepreneur is supposed to be, a person who knows the strategy and then simply puts it into implementation. So when faced with the decision that particular day against a MiG-29, I knew what to do, but that didn't necessarily mean I was going to execute it. So what did I do? Remember my instructor said at a slow speed merge, if the MiG-29 goes nose low, pull your nose up, pirouette, and take an AIM-9 shot. So what did I do? Well, I pulled my nose up, pirouette took a radar lock for an AIM-9 and then closed down uh, for the gunshot, which basically means you won. A very young pilot against a very experienced pilot, an American airplane against a Russian-made airplane, to say that it was the thrill of my year is an understatement. Now, I'd like to tell you that story to tell you that I was the second coming of Iceman. I'd like to tell you that story to tell you that I was such a great, naturally gifted pilot that nothing could go wrong. But the truth is, I simply had my instructors, the intelligence officers to thank for a simple procedure against a simple airplane in a simple dogfight. So today on Ed Talks Live, we are going to talk about fighter pilot performance for entrepreneurs. By the time we're done, I'm gonna be sharing three main strategies 
three ways that you can focus better, that you can get more done and you can share your message with the world. I'm going to start with getting into state, a discussion of how to get your mind ready for the work that you have to do in the world. The second thing, I'm going to shift gears into focus, how to focus better and how to get things done better. And then third, I'm going to talk about building a community of wingmen, people that can help you uh, get things done. Now, before I do that, I'm going to jump in to chat and say hello. Um, let's see, <laughs> Mike Semmel says, three kinds of people in the world, uh, those who make things happen, those who watch things happen, and those who wonder what happened. I like that. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go to the top. By the way, Denise joined us. She was on 30 minutes early today. Some of you know, I, I come in and check in a little bit early into the uh, chat system, and, um, uh, and oftentimes someone's already there uh, saying hello. Uh, so I said good morning to Denise about a half an hour early. Dennis said gear up, flaps up, positive rate of climb. Good morning, Ed and friends. By the way, if you're a pilot, you know what that means. If you're not, what that means is you say that typically over the over the intercom to your assistant uh, or to your um, uh, uh, co-pilot as you say, hey, gear up, flaps up, positive rate of climb. What that means is the airplane's coming off the ground. Um, Aaron says, yeah, you guys are on early. That's what I'm talking about, man. Wendell says, good morning. Uh, where are you at? There, there you are, buddy. Good morning, early birds. Jim Butts from Carlsbad, California says, another Sunday day. Hello, Delisa. Dr. Tom, who I'm talking to on the phone in just a couple hours. Good to see you, buddy. How are you? Uh, John Teague, hello. Oh, yeah, it did happen fast now, didn't it? Uh, Robert, good morning, he says uh, to everyone. Hello, Salee from Tucson. Um, Aaron Mill, yes, I should have worn my shirt. I had that shirt, <laughs> it says, because I was inverted. Day one, oh, yes. Some of you are on day one of the 21-day productivity course. Um, if, you're, if, if what I just said, you have no idea, last week I made a $400 off deal for people who wanted to get into my productivity course, which took it down to about $200, by the way. So uh, if you're interested in that, let me know. Uh, go Navy. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, Gina says, girlfriend here just implemented again. Second YouTube live stream wrapped up a few minutes ago. I love it. Thank you, Gina, for that. Uh, Terry, good to see you. And Diana, hello, hello. All right, so if you just joined us, my name's Ed Rush. This is Fighter Pilot Performance for Entrepreneurs. Today on the show, uh, we are going to be talking uh, about how you can get more done in less time with less waste. And we're going to start with an understanding uh, of how to get yourself into state. Now, I've got four main strategies for you on this. And I will tell you, as we get into the show today, the teaching content today, normally uh, I have about 20 to 25 minutes worth of teaching content, and then I leave time for questions. And if you're familiar with this, normally I go about 50 minutes uh, because my 25 minutes turns to 50 minutes, and then we take some questions. My goal is to open up a little bit more time for questions specifically related to this topic today. So we'll see uh, what happens, okay? But uh, <laughs> before I do that, I'm gonna give a little bit of a um, introduction to the show. And by the way, if you haven't already said hello, Charlie says, Tower, this is Ghost Rider requesting a flyby. If you've seen Top Gun, you know what that's about. Top Gun 2, by the way, was supposed to release this June. Not going to happen. Top Gun's going to release next year. And by the way, I expect that my uh, keynote uh, request will go up when Top Gun 2 comes out. <laughs> All right. So uh, if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. This is Fighter Pilot Performance for Entrepreneurs Today. Uh, we're talking about how to get more done in less time with less waste, finally allowing yourself the freedom to enjoy life. In a moment, I'm going to be jumping up onto the board. But today, today the training is broken down into three parts. The first one, I'm going to be discussing how to get into state. The second one is to dial in your focus. And the third one is how to build a community of wingmen and why that is uh, so important. But before we do that, uh, let's jump into the first of the topic. And by the way, your comment, if you haven't logged into the chat on YouTube, that's over to the right. Facebook, that's below you. Also on Twitter, please do say hello. And if you haven't clicked that little like button, uh, I just want to say thank you to the first the first four of you. I think we're uh, Denise and then um, Aaron uh, and um, uh, Dennis. And there was someone else, Wendell, I think. the first there, there were four people waiting about a half an hour before the show. And there were four thumbs up. That means all of you said thumbs up. I appreciate that. All right. So let's get into some of the strategies today, and then we're going to get um, into your specific questions. So if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. This is Fighter Pilot Performance for Entrepreneurs. 
Uh, today we're going to be talking about the three main strategies to dial in your productivity and your performance as a human. Now, I'm going to be specifically talking about this in relation to you as an entrepreneur, to you getting things done at your desk or in your business or with your team. But you can spread these strategies out into the corners. For example, if you're an athlete, you can use these to perform at your peak. One of the markets that I work with are basketball referees, people who have to be focused in on a basketball game for a two hour, hour period of time, this will work for you. If you happen to be uh, working on a task in your yard or in your garden or with your kids or with your relationships or with your family, you're looking to study something, these strategies will work for you. But I'm gonna be making applications specifically to you uh, as entrepreneurs, okay? So I'm gonna jump up over to the other, uh, um, to the other uh, camera here and let's get uh, rocking and rolling. So the first strategy that I'm going to be sharing uh, with you today is about getting into state, all right? Now, what I mean by getting into state is this. Have you ever had one of those days where you woke up uh, and you were like, oh man, I, I call them Eeyore days, you know, where you're like, life is hard, everything, okay, that's the opposite of the state that you want to. Now, it's been my experience that that state, for the most part, is irrespective of what's happening in your life. In other words, I know people who things have been going well, they've got plenty of money in their bank account and they can have that state. And I know people who things are going not all that well and, and, and there's not money in the bank account and they're feeling great and they're motivated. And so in a lot of ways, the state that you're in, in most cases, I believe, is external to external circumstances. It's what's happening inside. Okay, so now you've got three things that line up. Okay, you've got your mind, You've got your body and you've got your emotions, okay? When we talk about state, a lot of times we're looking into this right here, into the emotional state. For example, people say, I just feel down today or I feel frustrated today or I'm just not as productive as I want to be today, okay? And so a lot of times entrepreneurs anchor in on these right here, which are emotions, but remember, that all of the emotions, if you remember we talked about this last week, all of your emotions start with a way of thinking. It starts with a thought process. In fact, a lot of times it starts with an agreement. What I mean uh, by an agreement is something that you said in your mind or that someone said to you that became truth for you even though it might not have been, okay? So for example, one of the agreements that you could make is like, man, everything's hard. Everything's always hard. Why is it always so hard, okay? That's an agreement because in your mind, if you say everything's hard, what happens is you go, yeah, everything's hard. And then what happens after that is your subconscious mind combines with your body and your emotions to make everything hard, okay? That's the reason why in my business, I have a philosophy called easy and light, okay? Easy and light as a philosophy is an assumption that things should be fairly easy for you to get things done. All right, now, if I have time, I will cover deeper on easy and light, but I don't have time to do that. I'm just gonna write it down because this is an awesome tip that I love sharing with my coaching members, all right? So, all right, now, back to this. Your emotions are where these, these state thoughts reside, but your emotions start with a way of thinking, okay? so. When I, when, we get talk, when I talk about how to get into state, how to get yourself prepared for your day so that you can execute at the highest levels, I'm going to start not with your emotions, nor with your mind, but first with your body. And here's the reason why. If you remember inside of 21 Day Miracle, which I've got stacked, come on, I got this book stack over here. If you remember inside of 21 Day Miracle, there's a chapter in this book called the 21 Day, hang on the 21 day uh, happiness miracle. And in that chapter, I talk about your body being a hacking system to use to get into your mind so that you can change your emotions. So for example, sometimes simply just standing up and walking around will change your state, will make you feel more productive and will make you better. For example, one of the things that I've done in the past, if I'm writing, okay, so for example, this book, which I just showed you, this book I wrote in about seven days of actual writing. It took me from idea to bestseller in 20 days, this book, okay? So one of the things, one of the techniques that I used when I was writing that book 
is I would get myself into state, I would write, 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 and then all of a sudden, maybe about two to three hours into writing, I would start to feel like the process of slowing down, like it was getting a little sluggish. And oftentimes what I would do is pack up my laptop, get my NR headphones, go down to Starbucks, okay, or a local coffee shop, and I would put my headphones on and I would write there. And literally the act of getting up with my body and going someplace else told my mind, hey, we're going to work now. We're going to be productive now. And I would get another hour of productivity simply because I changed my location with my body and therefore I changed the state in my mind and therefore I changed my emotions, okay? So quite a bit of what happens down here, sorry, 100% of what happens down here is modulated and modified by the mind, but your body is a way to hack into the mind, okay? So here's what I wanna do. Let's start with a discussion of how to begin to hack into your mind so that you can change your emotions so that you can be in the optimum state as an entrepreneur, okay? So the first one, okay, like literally one of the very first things that I use when I'm trying to get myself into a certain state is music. Now, this might surprise you, but it shouldn't. If you watched any mu any movies with fighter pilots in them, you'll always hear like, it's like every, every movie that you've ever watched tells you as a viewer what to think by the music. I mean, think about it for a second. If somebody walks onto the set with a dark jacket and a dark hat and the music is like, dun, 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 you're like, that's a bad guy right there. That's a bad guy. I know they haven't said it yet, but I know it's the best because the music told you that. My mom had a, had a movie made about her life. My mom is a Hall of Fame basketball coach. The movie uh, is called The Mighty Max. And I was able to watch an early version of that movie three years before it hit the theaters. And the early version of the movie I thought was just okay. And in between this version and three years later, they had one of Hollywood's best uh, um, uh, musical, uh, what are they called? Uh, conductors create a brand new score for the movie. And three years later, I watched the movie again with a new score and I was like, that movie was amazing. The only difference was the music. The music in movies tells you how to feel, right? As the music picks up, you know something adventurous is gonna happen. As the movie music turns into this love music, you're like, yep, romance time, romance time. As the music turns towards that bad guy, you know, the music in movies tells you what state to be in with regard to the move, uh, mu uh, movie, and music can do the same thing for you, okay? So, I have a wide array of music that I listen to on a typical workday. Let me give you an example of a, a handful. So, I have this uh, playlist of classical songs, okay, that are designed, it's, uh, there's, there's a playlist actually on iTunes called Classical Musical Music for Studying, these are songs that have been designed to get you into a very meditative or thoughtful state. So sometimes I'm sitting and working, especially when I'm writing, sometimes I'll just be listening to classical music. Now, I wrote an entire book called, uh, the book title is uh, Warrior. I think I have the old book cover here. This is the old uh, book cover. There's a new one actually on Amazon. When I wrote Warrior, Warrior was a book about fighting for the things that you believe in, okay? When I wrote that book, the entire soundtrack I listened to for an entire eight days of writing the book was Band of Brothers, if you've ever listened to that soundtrack, and Braveheart. Those two movie soundtracks looped for eight straight days while I was writing the book because the book, and thematically, the book aligns with those songs, right? It's about, it's about fighting, it's about going to war for your uh, belief system, okay? Some days, like for example, some days you just wake up and you're just not feeling, oh, you're just, Ugh. Uh, got that feeling. And I'm not exaggerating when I tell you just before I pushed live on this show today, the song Lose Yourself by Eminem was in the background. Okay, now some of you don't like songs like that because they have profanity in them, but it, sometimes you need to pump it up, right? And I'm telling you, play that song. Play that, play Lose Yourself. I'm not going to play any of this stuff because YouTube will kick me off here for copyright, okay? But sometimes, you know, just get yourself pumped up. Okay, you need some music to get you into that state. So those are three different examples, right? I gave you the example of uh, when I wrote this warrior book, I had some like war kind of war kind of music. 
Then I've got classical music. Sometimes when you're just getting into yourself into like a meditative, productive state, sometimes you need to pump yourself up. Sometimes you need to take yourself down. Okay, so my first little hack to get yourself in state is simply the music. Choose, choose, choose the kind of music that's going into, into your ears. Okay, the second uh, strategy for getting into the state is the superhero strategy. Now, the superhero strategy, some of you remember, way back on one of the early Ed Talk shows, I shared a book uh, called The Alter Ego Effect by Todd Herman. Uh, this book fundamentally encapsulated a, a, a way of thinking that I've been using for years. Now, I was doing a speaking event just a few months ago. What, you know, Back when we used to do live events, I, I did a speaking event just a few months ago to a group of martial arts business owners. And I was talking to the martial arts business owners about asking for the sale. In other words, asking parents uh, to get to sign their kids up with their school. Because the funny thing about martial arts business owners is they're like super like tough on the mat, but then sometimes when they get into a sales environment, they're like backing off, okay? And I said, look, let me ask you a question. I asked them, I didn't even know the answer to this. I said, when you put on your gi, that's the outfit martial arts uh, students and instructors use, that white outfit or sometimes black, that gi, I said, when you put on your gi, you feel like sometimes you're putting on a superhero cape. Sometimes you feel like you're like, put, you're put on a new person. And when you walk out there, do you feel different than you did before? And they're all like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I said, the same thing has to happen for you in sales, okay? When you get into the selling environment where you're talking to some parents, maybe a group of parents, about signing up, you need to get on that personality, okay? You need to get on that persona. So for a second, I'm gonna move into a short side talk about deal making. Now, next week on the show, I'm going to be doing a longer discussion of how to price yourself so that you can grow and make more in smaller work, okay? In other words, how to get paid more for less. I'm gonna talk about deal making, all right? So, but in deal making, one of the most important things when you're charging money for something, and if you're an entrepreneur, you're charging money for everything, right? So one of the most important things for you if you're charging money for something is to have the mental state that says, you know what, I'm worth it. I'm worth it. So one of the things that I do with my private coaching and consulting clients, when you come to me and we sit down and work one-on-one -on -one in your business, as we do this together, okay, one of the things that I look at is your pricing what you charge for the things that you offer. Okay, so I had one of my students recently who was with me in a coaching session and she was charging about $5,000 for a consulting package where she helped people launch, create and launch books and this $5,000 package should have been more like about fifteen to 25000 And in the day I told her, wow, you're just like, this is so much cheaper than it should be. And she's like, I know, but you don't understand my market and but you don't understand and they almost always say that you don't understand okay and then I'm like well I know but I also understand you should charge more I said look I think we should get you to about 15,000 but let's do this slowly let's go to seven she went to seven and then she went to eight and then all of a sudden one day eight months later she, she sent me an email now this is a very conservative person who doesn't use language like this and the language uh, that she sent to me on the email was she goes you know I just decided F it I'm worth it, I'm going to 25,000. And I'm like, yes, okay. Because a lot of deal making, and she was getting deals at that, by the way. Uh, a lot of deal making is the way you think about yourself. Okay, now, there is a term that I want to debunk, and then I'm gonna come back, answer, or check chat real quick, and then we're gonna get back to the second uh, topic. There's a term that you've heard before, okay? And it goes like this. You've heard this, this phrase. It goes, fake it till you make it. You ever heard that before? So people say like when it comes to uh, charging money, uh, people go, hey, you know, sometimes you just got to fake it till you make it. <laughs> okay. And here's what I'll tell you. This is completely false. This is not true, right? Because here's the deal. You already made it. Okay. The entrepreneurs that I know and I work with have great products. They have great services. They under promise and over deliver. They, they fulfill all of their promises. You made it. The biggest challenge is most entrepreneurs are thinking of themselves less than they should, right? So for example, there is a verse in the, in the, in the book of Romans where Paul was writing. And in that book, Paul said, you shouldn't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. He said, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Now, most people who read that, especially uh, uh, sometimes Christians kind of get themselves into this weird mode 
uh, where they're like, oh, I'm not really that good. Okay, most people read that, and here's what they read. Don't think of yourself highly. But you know what? He didn't say that. He said, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. You have to remember. You're an amazing person put on this planet Earth to accomplish great things. You are a child of God. <laughs> you know what that brings along with it? I mean, think about for that for a second. What would you give to your kids? Okay? You are exactly who you are, and you deserve to be well compensated for the work that you're doing in the world. I would go so far as to say this. If you're charging below what you should be charging, you're doing not only yourself a disservice, but you're doing the people that you're working with a disservice, and you're also doing the world a disservice. Remember the other day, someone asked me on the show, hey, what do we do to change the political world? One of the first things I said to you was, you need to make and keep money, right? Make and keep money, all right? So, on the first one here, one of the keys for being a great entrepreneur in terms of the things that you can produce is to get yourself into a state where you have maximum kind of productivity. Some of the ways to do that include music, right? It's just a hack into your brain to change the state just like they do in the movies. Another one is the way you're thinking about yourself as like this superhero person. As you come, for example, into deal making, it means asking for the sale even if you don't feel like it. <laughs> it means asking for the sale even if you don't feel like you're worth it because you know what? You're gonna find out uh, soon that you're worth it. So this is part one of fighter pilot performance. The next one I'm gonna talk quickly about focus, how to focus, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about community uh, and wingman. But before I do that, I'm gonna jump over here uh, to our front camera. Hang on a second, there we go. And let's go and check out, get some cool um, comments in here. All right, so um, thank you, Charles. Dennis says he's reading Warrior. Maybe I should listen to those. Yes, <laughs> yes. If you listen to Band of Brothers or um, Braveheart while you're reading the Warrior book, you will you will get the um, uh, you will get the uh, the gist of how I wrote that book. Uh, Jim, this is Jim House, by the way. He says state is everything. If you remember in Jim's uh, episode on Ed Talks, the nine publishing tips to share your message. Jim said the one of the I think it was the first publishing tip was how to get into uh, state. All right, so uh, Denise says I love. Oh, we are the champions! What a great, great, great. So, so and again, there's different songs that I will do. And, and so let's talk about speaking uh, for just a second. There are different songs, um, Denise, that I'll use depending on where I'm at before speaking. Right? Sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you've been on the road for a while and you got this talk and you're trying to get yourself like motivated and like, we are the champ. <laughs> That's a great way to start it. There are some other times when I'm in front of a big audience and I've been jazzed about this for weeks and I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like, oh, okay. And what happens with me, if, my, if I get too up, right? I talk too fast. I don't pause in my stories. So sometimes, Denise, when I'm backstage, sometimes I'm like, okay. And I get myself into this, sort of zen, natural state where all of a sudden I'm feeling like oh, one with the earth, you know? Um, I have fake it till you make it down to, to an art, down to an art form, I love that. Um, I crank Boston's more than a feeling. I should not, I should not, uh, I shouldn't sing it. Uh, preach it, brother. Correct context is important. All right, David says, love this. When I referee, I have a song in my head pretty much the whole time. When a coach blows up at me before I go talk to him, <laughs> I go, this is going to be easy. <laughs> I like that. Excellent. This is power and right on in these times. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate it. Comments in chat are, are helpful as usual, so thank you for that. All right. So let's get into uh, part two of, if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. This is Fighter Pilot Performance for Entrepreneurs. Today, we're talking about the ways that entrepreneurs can flat out conquer the world. Uh, we just covered the first point, which is how to get into state. Uh, now let's move into the second one real quick, uh, which is uh, a focus. And then again, I'm going to come back and take your questions. I promise to leave about the last 10 minutes or so. And we're, we're on time to do that. In fact, I might leave a little bit more, okay? So uh, hang on real quick. Let me just get my little setup here. 
All right, so if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. This is Fighter Pilot Performance for Entrepreneurs. We're talking about how to get more done in less time with less waste, allowing yourself the freedom to enjoy life, how to conquer the world, how to change the world, and how to have more fun. I just shared the first strategy, which is how to get into state. Some of you remember in the beginning of the show, I talked about this SU-27 and how I built, beat a similar airplane, the MiG-29. Part of that was being in state. The second part uh, is, how, is uh, all around uh, focus. Now, there's quite a bit of talk about this in the entrepreneurial uh, community. People talk about, how do I focus? Because fundamentally, we live in a world that was designed for distraction. What I mean by designed for distraction is this. Uh, Facebook, for example. Facebook has transparently told the world that their goal with their news feed is to keep someone on the news feed. Uh, YouTube has told the world essentially that their goal uh, for their video platform is to keep someone on their video platform. That's the reason why after videos, there'll be recommended videos. That's why even now as you're watching this, if you are on YouTube, there are a whole bunch of videos down the right hand side that are like distraction, distraction, distraction. Okay. Uh, the, all of the Twitter, okay. They're all designed from the ground up by really smart people to distract you in any way possible. Your iPhone, in many ways, was designed from the ground up to be a distraction vehicle for you. That's why one of the things I always recommend to the entrepreneurs that follow me is turn your flip to your notifications on your iPhone and turn all of your notifications off. Some of you have taken me up uh, on that challenge so far. Now, as an entrepreneur, one of your keys, however, is focus, okay? So take it all the way back. Like I'm talking like back to caveman days. I'm not I'm talking about like all the way back. Think about how simple life was. You had to go out and find some food. So focus on finding food. And then you got the food, you came home and you prepared the food, you know? Raised the family, prepared the food, find the food. It's like a very, very simple, fundamentally simple uh, life, you know? Look, it's actually not that different now, okay? The only difference is we have a world that was designed totally to distract us, okay? so. I'm gonna give you a few tools on how to get around that world that has been designed, okay, to, uh, to distract you. Three main tools, okay? The first one uh, is a little thought exercise or a meditation exercise around focus, all right? And all this is is simply training your mind to simply focus for just a little while, okay? so. Do a meditation. I don't care how long it is. It could be five minutes. It could be 50 minutes. I've done this meditation for as short as five minutes and as long as 50 minutes. If this doesn't matter, set a timer and just do it. Okay. So here's what you do. The first thing I want you to do when you meditate for about a minute is just to simply focus on your breath. That's ideally the way to start most of your meditations. And now here's what you do. You focus on your feet. Give it about 30 seconds, maybe five or 10 breaths, just focusing on your feet. Then focus on your ankles, five or 10 breaths on your ankles. Focus on your knees. This is, used, this is about two to three minutes we've been going so far now on this. Knees, thighs, waist, belly, chest, head, top of head, and then back down again. And just do this like you're playing scales on a piano. Just do that for your entire meditation. What you're teaching in a meditation like that is you're teaching your mind to focus on something. And you're just moving that focus. And what you're doing is nothing more than training. If you've ever done a bicep curl or a push up or kettlebells, what you're simply doing is training. You're training your muscles to get stronger. Well, when you meditate that way, you're training your mind to get stronger. So try that. When you wake up in the morning, sit up in your bed or sit in a chair like I've got sitting here in my office and breathe and then just do five breaths, focusing on one spot, five breaths, focusing on the next. You're training yourself to focus. Now, when you train yourself to focus, you have the side benefit of training yourself to avoid distraction, okay? So that's the first one. The second one are timers. Now, I use timers in almost every area of entrepreneurial activity, either using clocks that are on the wall to time my activities, or no joke, like an actual countdown timer. So for example, one of the things that I will often do 
uh, is set aside a single hour every day to focus on the most important part of my day. So just a few months ago, for example, uh, promoting the ultimate speaker event that so many of you are registered for, uh, that was my focus. That was my main goal. Okay. So I would set aside an hour a day of undistracted, uninterrupted time to be able to focus in on that goal. To do that, I would literally go to Google. I would type in the word timer into Google. I would set it for 60 minutes and hit go. Or I would pull up my phone, time it for 60 minutes and go. Now the rule is when you're using your timers is very simple. Your rule is no distractions, none. Okay. I'm going to get to everyone else in a second. No distractions. What that means is you can't check your email. You can't check your text. If the phone rings, you can't answer it. It should be off anyway. Okay. Everything is off and you can't be distracted. Now, here's what's going to happen. Sometime in that 60 minutes and probably right about the five to 10 minute mark, the whole world will conspire to get you off of your game. You'll get a text message that's from an important person that you, oh my gosh, I totally forgot I was supposed to talk to them yesterday, right? You'll get somebody that will knock on the door of your office. No distractions, 60 minutes. You can do this. Look, you can do this. I'm going to tell you, if you were some, like, if you're on a ride in Disneyland, you can not be distracted for that entire time, right? You can't get your phone out anyway. So if you could do that, you can do it for 60 minutes. Okay. Timers number three uh, is everyone else. Okay. When you're doing, you're focusing, everyone else needs to participate. What that means is if you work at home, your spouse needs to understand, Hey, for the next 60 minutes, I need to just be undisturbed. I've got some work to do. If you have team members in your office, they need to understand that for the next 60 minutes, I need to be undisturbed. You go set your timer and you do it. Now, the secondary benefit to a focus exercise is it spreads out into the corners. When you train yourself to think meditatively in a focus way, and when you train yourself at work to focus in short bursts for short periods of time, what you find out is that later on, you're having a conversation with your spouse or later on you're having a little chat with one of your kids or your grandkids and you're like, Hey, you know what? I'm like a lot more focused. I'm like a lot more focused in on this right now too. Okay. So that's focus. All right. Now I'm going to come back really quickly just to any of the comments uh, in chat and Oh, thank you, Robert. Make sure you hit the like thumbs up. Oh yeah. Here we go. Frank says I the tiger baby <laughs> works for me. I like that. Um, <laughs> he lists, Robert says, I listened to dare to dream by Yanni. Um, let's see yoga pose. I don't even know what that is, but that sounds amazing. I just sit in my chair with my legs crossed. Uh, let's see. Um, I think that was spam. All right. Dennis says, love it. Jim says I do 25 on then a five minute break when that's another great work strategy on and off. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll do. I'll do a 50 minute block. This is a good, this is a good a point. A lot of times what I'll do when I use my timers is I'll do a 50 minute block with 10 minutes off. But inside of this, if you're in, for example, the 21 day time freedom miracle inside of that system, uh, you'll see that I script things out. So for example, let's say I, I set aside 50 minutes to, to um, for a, a copywriting project, writing seven emails to send out to my list. Sometimes I'll get it done in like 40 minutes instead of 50. And if I do it in 40 minutes, if I accomplish a task, now I have a 20 minute break, right? So, so you can, you can play games with yourself to make, make things happen faster. David says studies show you can strengthen your actual biceps by thinking about doing heavy bicep curls. Dude, that's awesome. So I think I'm going to sit in my chair, watch sports, drink beer, and just think about working out. <laughs> I love it. All right, cool. I will try that out. Give it a shot. All right. So this is focus. So uh, we just covered getting into state. We covered focus. The third one I'm going to cover is community wingman. This will be quick. Uh, and then I'll wrap it up with any questions that you have. Okay. So get your questions. You can start putting them in. If you have questions, just format it by saying the word question and typing it in the chat. All right. All right. So let's move into point number three on fighter pilot performance for business fighter pilot performance for entrepreneurs. I got a secret for you, by the way. This book, which you can find on Amazon, uh, take the shot. This book used to be this book. You see that it says fighter pilot performance for business, uh, strategies for accelerating productivity, profits, and peace of mind. I call this book, my Battlestar Galactica book. Look at that cover. See the, see like it's got the Battlestar Galactica look on it. 
Um, this book here, I didn't love the cover. <laughs> That's the reason why I changed it to something a little bit, whoops, to something a little bit more brand representative. Um, this second one it goes, just goes to show that if you don't like your book cover or even your book title, you can always change it in Amazon. Dennis and I were just talking about this via email last week. Um, this book, they're the same book, by the way. This book is available here. So if you want it for free, um, there. See the website just below me that says edrush.com slash free book. Uh, that website right below you is where it goes. If you can put that in the chat, the least it'd be great because the image was covering up my head. All right, so let's rock and roll into the last strategy uh, and then I'll take your questions. If you just joined us, this is Fighter Pilot Performance for Entrepreneurs. My name is Ed Rush, five-time number one best-selling author, former F-18 fighter pilot, your host for the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. Today we're talking about how to get more done in less time with less waste. Uh, strategy number one was how to get into state. Uh, talked about three different strategies to how to focus your mind on your day. Uh, number two was focus. We just covered that. And number three, I'm calling wingmen. Or if you want to be gender non-specific wingmen and wing women. All right. By the way, I was in the first F-18 squadron uh, that had female backseaters and female pilots. Okay. So I had wing women. Uh, but you know what? We called them wing, wingmen. <laughs> okay, so hey, don't be mad at me. That was just what we did. All right, so now, um, this third part is oftentimes one of the most overlooked parts of being an entrepreneur. The truth is, it's very lonely being an entrepreneur. Uh, first of all, nobody gets you. Like, have you ever had this happen before where someone, after knowing you for years, is like, so tell me exactly what you do. <laughs> like, they don't even understand it. I had that, that happen in church all the time. People would be like, so I don't get it. You have products online. That doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm like, I sell drugs. You know, like I'm just trying to make something up just because they couldn't understand what I did because the entrepreneurial world is very lonely. Now, you can't share things even, for example, with some of your closest employees, right? For example, if you've got an employee working in your office and you just had like a $2 million month, you tell your two million employee they're gonna want more money, right? Or, or if you if you don't have any money, like if you just had a zero two months, you can't share that with them. They're gonna get all nervous that they're gonna get fired or something like that. It's a lonely world, and what you need oftentimes as an entrepreneur is community. Okay, that's the reason why, uh, for for the most part, I always have masterminds that I host for people that come and work with me, uh, and I almost always participate in masterminds. In fact, I'm putting together. Uh, another one right now. What you need, okay, in a group is you need people who understand you, people who are going to be honest with you, and people who will hold you accountable, right? Because as an entrepreneur, you're going to say you're going to do things, but a lot of times you don't. But if you say it in front of a group of people that you consider your peers, you're going to do it, right? That's the reason why we've been trying to do Focus Friday, where you say what you're going to do. Um, you also need people who are going to be honest with you. I have to just say, I have had people in my life who were brutally honest with me. I mean, painfully honest with me. Like, like real, real, like hard to hear kind of honest. But you know what? I'm glad I heard it. Because if something looked bad, and if something was bad four years ago, it's better for me to know four years ago than now. I'd rather feel the pain four years ago, then four years into the future going, man, that was just an awful promotion. Why did I ever even think about doing that? It was helpful to have someone who was brutally honest. The other day I was talking about our country and how as a country, I don't even think we have a, have a, uh, we have a desire for truth anymore. We have a desire in our country for our own version of truth sometimes, but not necessarily true, but you need people who are going to be honest with you. And then you need people who understand you, people who are part of your tribe and your team who, who can look you in the eye and go, you're doing a great job. You really are. You've grown so much over the last uh, year. By the way, this is not a setup. I just I am thinking about doing an, uh, another uh, mastermind. I got completely out of the mastermind business last summer. I closed my last mastermind um, last August and then didn't do any at all. But I was thinking about potentially launching one. So if you're interested in that, all you have to do is just let me know. Okay? Uh, they're typically fairly expensive, but uh, I'm looking to put together two groups. Actually, one is my six-figure group of six-figure earners. One is a seven figure group, okay? Uh, and Or people who are moving into six figures, moving into seven figures uh, to take a look at that. All right, so when it comes to, to you performing as an entrepreneur, it's state, focus, and wingman. And by the way, this one right here, 
I didn't, I never went into combat without a wingman. Never. I'm talking about never. If my wingman's airplane broke on the runway or maybe it, it's, it wasn't working when we got all started up and did our, all of our pre-flight checks, I wouldn't go either. That's how important your wingman is there to make sure that you're okay, to make sure that you can support each other. And we didn't even really have active air threats when I was in Iraq in combat, but we never went uh, without a wingman. Okay, so those are your three for today. Uh, I'm gonna jump back in and answer any questions or comments. If we have any questions or comments, we've got a big old stack of books over here, by the way. Let's see, what do we got? Oh shoot, I even brought a couple extra. Um, good to go. Read books. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you're not signed up for weekly flight briefing every Wednesday, uh, I send out an email and a podcast and a video that's about eight minutes long on what I'm reading, what I'm focusing on, and the areas of my life uh, that I am working on right now. So if you haven't signed up for that, uh, where's the website? There you go. The website right there is edrush.com. Just scroll down on the middle of the page, put your name and email in there, and all, I, all I'll all tell you is if I send an email to you, it'll be worth it. it. It'll be worth you reading it. All right? So, Ben Farmer, I lo- everyone asks about this. He says, it looks like a moonshine mason jar. It's a great way to focus. Maybe not. Short side story. And by the way, throw your questions into um, chat if you have them. Otherwise, I'm going to get ready to wrap this baby up. Uh, So, uh, Ben, I was at the Atlanta Motor Speedway uh, in 1995 for the NASCAR championship race. Mark Martin, uh, Dale Earnhardt, and, oh, who is it? Um, Anyway, it was Richard Petty's last race. And I decided, I'm going to go for a walk on the track. It was nighttime, and I went for, I just started walking around the track. And some guys came up to the fence in the infield, and they started yelling at me, hey, hey, they'll arrest you for doing that. I walked over the fence, and they said, yeah, man, there's police driving around. They'll arrest people for walking on the track. Oh, I didn't know that. I just walked out onto the track. So I jumped over the fence, and I went and sat next. These guys had a little campfire going uh, right next to their RV. And uh, they were, this was Atlanta, so they were good old Georgia boys. Uh, and the one guy had a mason jar that looked like this, and he handed it to me and he said, hey man, you should take some of this. This here is moonshine. Our pastor made it for us. And I thought, that's gotta be the best sentence I've ever heard in my life. Our pastor made it for us. <laughs> so apparently, there's some churches in Georgia where you can go to church and you can get a homemade moonshine from your pastor. What a country. What a country. All right. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. He says this is great. This is a great place for moonshine. All right. Body focus is, stop wor- is a great stop worrying before you go to sleep. Yes. So another, another great way to um, come down from your day is to lay in bed and do a five-minute meditation. Feet, legs, knees. Okay. Woo-hoo-hoo. All the way down and all the way back. All right, uh, Dennis says, thank you, Ed. Amazing job, Mason Jar Stocks. <laughs> you know what? This is, this is just water, as you, as you can imagine. This, however, is home-brewed coffee, okay? Some of you are drinking Rock Creek coffee, by the way. You should drink it. Uh, it's good for you, and you're going to support a, a, a business. Um, Diana says, question, what about meditating on your next step? I'm assuming... Diana, you're asking about the next step that you're going to take in business or the next step that you're going to take in life. When I do meditation, just so you know, I combine uh, not just meditation, but I usually combine spiritual practice, the spiritual practice of prayer. And I would go so far as to say the spiritual practice, practice of partnering with God. My belief around my business is that I'm uh, I'm partnering with God to create change in the world, the kind of change uh, that we want to take. So oftentimes when I meditate, uh, I will bring God in one form or another or the Trinity in one form of, of another, Diana, into the meditation in ter- terms of the discussion. And I've had times where I would literally download my instructions for the day uh, right into my journal during a meditation. So yes, I like that. Uh, Jim says, then go to church. Then go to church. Um, oh, Charles, thank you for that. Can you say more on how to shut your brain off before you go to bed? I can't seem to shut uh, down terrible sleep. All right, so 
Um, a couple things about sleep. So I typically don't have any, any problem at all going to sleep. Part of it is the brain control uh, thing. And so I will say, uh, Charles, there, that there's some strategies that I'm going to te teach quickly about, uh, about breathing, meditating, sleeping. But I'll tell you, mo there's a lot of people that teach these as like you do them every night. Uh, my, my discovery has been if you do them for say a few weeks, like 21 days, you can train yourself to go from one state to the next. Some of you heard me t say this, I'll do this real quick, but I, I realized going from work to home, it was like shifting from fifth gear to second gear. And I, would, I wouldn't be very good with my family for like a half an hour because I was all freaking out. And then I would do these meditations for 20, 30 minutes before I went from my work upstairs to home because I work at home. I would do these meditations to bring myself down state-wise and then I would go upstairs and then all of a sudden I realized, wait a second, I know the state before and I know the state after, why can't I just do it? And I would shift right into that state just like that. So Charles, I'll give you two different thoughts on things you can do before you go to bed. And then, uh, and then what you'll see is when you do these consistently for a little while, you're probably not gonna need to do them forever because you're gonna train yourself, okay? The first one is breath work or breathing. There are two resources that I like for breathing. The first one is called Pranayama. It's an app. It's like the oldest, crappiest app I've ever seen on iPhone, but it's simply uh, an app that uses, um, it just uses noise to, to help you time out your breathing. And what I do is a, is a technique called box breathing. That's in for five seconds hold for five seconds, out for five seconds, hold the exhale for five seconds, and you do that for five minutes. In, hold, out, hold, in, hold, five. Five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. And I use an app called Pranayama, P-R-A-N-A-Y-A-M-A, -A -A, to just time that out. I just coded it right in there. Breathe, 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 okay? So the second app that I've used in the past is called Wim Hof. W-I-M-H-O-F. This is coming in this week's flight briefing, by the way, so all you have to do is wait till Wednesday to get the email for that. The Wim Hof method is a different breathing method entirely. It involves essentially hyperventilating in a certain, certain way, and before you do this, check with your doctor, but I found it very effective. Both of those, both of those, just five minutes of a simple breathing exercise to get myself into a better state ready for bed, okay? The second so that's the first one is breathing. The second one is meditation. And there are like thousands of sleep meditations out there, especially if you use an app like Insight Timer, which I use. And so picking any sleep meditation would help you. One of the ones I love, okay, and I can't remember where I got this idea from. One of the ones I love is you do your meditation, okay? You do the meditation, all right? And then what you do is I'll imagine this room. And in this room, are all of my personal managers. I got my health manager, I got my diet manager, I got my business manager, I got my financial manager, I got my relationship manager, I got my kids manager. They're all there, they're all sitting in a room, okay? And you can animate them as much as you want to. And what I do before I go to bed, Charles, uh, is I ask, does anybody have anything that they need to talk about? And the relationship manager will go, you know, I think you need to finish that conversation with your wife about, oh yeah, that's right, okay. And so I'll take a little note on that. And then my kids manager will go, you know, your daughter said this earlier today and you completely dismissed it, but that's important what she said and you should follow up with her about what she said about her friend. Oh man, I, I did miss that. Okay, I'll write that down. That's important with my daughter. And then the business person will go, remember you were supposed to call Ken uh, yesterday, but you didn't call, oh I gotta, I gotta, I gotta call Ken, right? And I'll just go around and all the managers will get a chance to talk. And I'll just write down the things that the managers, and then I'll go, all right, does anybody else have anything else? Did I, did I miss anything? Does anybody have anything that they really need to get off their chest? Going once, going twice, all right. And I'm doing this, Charles, by the way, all during a meditation, I got a little notepad. Okay, all the managers talk, and then you dismiss the managers, finish your meditation, and you go to sleep. Because part of the reason why people who don't sleep well don't sleep well is because your brain, your subconscious is moving at such a fast pace because it's trying to remember all these things for you and remind you of all these things when sometimes you can just put it all down, okay? So two techniques for sleep. Try, the, try one, try the other, try both. 
uh, some breathing, just a little breathing exercises before you go to bed, or the meditation. Right, we are back. You know what happened? Charles, that answer to your question you needed to hear so bad that the internet was coming against you. <laughs> All right, so um, so uh, here's what happened, what happened, what happened, router. I've been trying to stream faster out of this office and have a better quality stream and I got a new router and ever since then nothing's working right. right. All right, um, John says, do you have any mantras or statements you use to get into state? I don't do typically anything, um, but I know people who use like Notre Dame football has play like a champion today. I have people who are like play like a champion today, right? I used to, John, sit down every day and go, today's going to be a money day. Today's going to be a money day. Today's going to be a money day because I had some issues with money. Uh, Robert says, pastor probably baked the love and bread too. <laughs> uh, check out the Donovan Sounds solution for tuning mind sleep. I have not tried that out. Charles says, thank you. Jim says, pretty sure I heard Ed's meditation business director say to, <laughs> yeah, dude, we need it. We, well, I, how about, wait, but, oh, it's closed. <laughs> so we need to do that steak dinner thing again. I'm not drinking this year, but uh, I could probably have a nice sparkling water on that fat steak over at Morton's. All right. So we are going to bring this ship in for a close. I've got to tell you really quickly about this week and what I've got prepared for you this week. Um, tomorrow, I've got Mike McIntyre coming back. You all said you loved Mike so much. We're going to go deeper into sales strategies, and this show is called Billion Dollar Sales Strategies Reloaded. Wednesday, I've got one of my best friends, Jonathan Sprinkles, coming in to talk about connecting after COVID, the new rules for building trust and clo closing sales. Um, and then on Thursday, I'm actually going up to Mike Koenig's studio. We're going to broadcast out of his studio, and that's not the title, but I wanted to just tell you that I'm going... So Mike, and then on Friday, sorry, on Friday, uh, again, I'm going to open up an opportunity for you to ask me what you want to ask me. Um, let's see. Dennis sent me, resend me the email if I missed it, coaching at edrush.com. And um, that is all for now. I hope you had a, have an awesome day. Today is a focus day, all right? So come off today's show, dial it flat out, dial it in. You have a message, a story, or an experience that's going to change the world. Be sure to come and meet me tomorrow. And I'll talk to you soon.